keep going. <laughs> so let's talk rabbits, shall we? Um, this guy, I the first one I did, we showed the picture of that one, and it is in this lovely little color right here, the flax. Where is it? The flax velveteen. Oh, so Chris left it in Sandy, so it's in the Sandy store for Easter. So that's why we got to make another one. And I just thought the dark gray would be kind of fun. I like the dark gray. Honestly, we have a lot of different colors. I would go with no. I think I would the go sage would be pretty too. The sage, the, um, there's a nice pretty red one. So there's some fun colors that you could do. Pink. And, um, is there pink? If you want, there's a. Um, I'm going to go get all the colors. Yeah, I think I'm there gonna actually go get all is. The colors. Okay, that's, I have white and I have flax. I got dressed up for work so. today. <laughs> She's in her sweats. So we're going to head on over here and I'm going to just kind of go over how we do this. Okay. There we go. And I'll just tip that down when we get there. So the first thing that you do, you get two rolls of velveteen. So the way that I've, I've written it is so that the entire bunny front of the bunny will fit on one and then you do everything over again so that you have the back. So you're able to do um, just two to make the whole rabbit. So if that, that kind of makes it easy. If we had done three, you would have had lots of leftovers. Now when you make this, it, it does fit kind of tight. So I recommend, um, even though it's kind of lame, but I recommend actually cutting the pattern out one item at a time. So, um, Oh, that's really cute. I'm going to grab mustard for the bunny. That's pretty cute. Um, yes, Jennifer, it's the same rabbit that she showed on Studio 5, but I will be, I'm going to tell you guys this, um, but I really haven't told anyone else outside of anywhere, like, you know, the rest of the Studio 5 crowd isn't going to know Do this, you want but your... I didn't really like the way the first one turned out. Shh. I know. Never so, let him see you sweat. Never let him see you sweat. But Chris liked it, so we went with it. It was all good. It's coming on the wrong side. Okay, here we go. These are... I think the sage would be pretty. All the colors. I don't know where I thought it was pink. Okay. Uh, flat felt. They have pink felt. Pink felt. You know, you could totally do this in felt, too. But there's all your different colors. That isn't black, but navy. Oh, I thought it was black. You're right. It's navy. Navy would be cute. Um, navy is my black. I don't ever do black. Really? I do navy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, that's okay, Lynn. Do you need me to hold this for you, or is it working? Um, I think so far. I'm just going to tip it a little bit, but you need to be over here with me, right? Okay. Here she is. But I don't need to be on camera. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Um, because it is so slippery... I don't recommend you stack it and do it all in one big fell swoop. Now, if you had more room, if you had a bigger piece of velveteen, I you could go for it because there'd be room for air, uh, room for a little bit of, of error on that. But because I was trying to really make sure it stayed in there, it's a kind of tight fit. Um, but you know, play around with it. If it's something that you decide you can do, then great. I don't know why I'm hanging on to a headless bunny. Okay. Now. Right. Here. Okay. So the first thing that you do is is She's you cut everything in. out. What was that? Even got a I know. I've even got a pin. I was stitching on his <laughs> arms. I was stitching him. Jill, I agree. I love the red. I think the red would be super cute. But you know, you can. There's so many colors. You can pick your little kid's you know favorite one. And this does not take very long. So it's really meant to be kind of a primitive type of a little thing. You know, I didn't do any shaping in the piecing and all that. It's just flat front and back and you're gonna laugh when I show you how we're doing the how we're doing the head <laughs> because oh no you, you just figured out it's no just... I did it the way I wanted to do it okay but it yeah she's just gonna hang on to them so anyway all of the pattern pieces are marked this is the obviously the the one the fake template that I came up with but you have the template in the pattern so voodoo bunny <laughs> anyway you're gonna cut everything out and then the first thing I start with are the ears, because those are the hardest can, to do. I don't have to be in this. <laughs> okay, well we're gonna we're gonna bring this down a little bit so I can kind of show you. Let's get rid of my phone. So the ears are the trickiest part. And you'll notice in your pattern 
that I have a dot at the top of the ear and then down here. And I don't know how many of you have done um, these kinds of projects before, but when sewing this, especially when we're dealing with the velveteen, it shifts. And so I have found that if I start here and go down one side, and then I start here and I go down the other side, um, it, it shifts a little bit, but it's down here where it doesn't make any difference. So it keeps the top nice and pretty, so to speak. So you're going to do right sides together and sew this little baby up. Then you're gonna flip it around. Now I do wanna show you one thing. Ooh, Jenny, can you grab me some scissors? Yes. You know where any are? You know, that's the funny thing around here. We can never find actual scissors. Um, you know what, a pen will work. I'm just gonna show you. When, this is in the instructions as well, but when you go to do your, um, the end of your bunny ear, uh, little tiny scissors. Oh, perfect. Okay, I wanted to note this real quick. When you um, sew everything together, you want to, especially at the top here, um, you want to act, you know how you cut the curves around um, different things? You actually want to take little triangle pieces out just around this part right here, and you could even do just a little bit of trimming um, because you don't want all that bulk in the bottom. This is especially true when we're doing this. Um, Susan says, dang, it's not in the hoop. But you guys, it's just as simple. No, okay. Just think, you don't That's not true. You have to use the presser foot or something, but if you, you actually have to touch it. It's okay. Thank you, Susan. Yes, you wanna notch out to the top. On this one, you can just clip that little top off without getting to there so without getting into it yes Jenny you were gonna say something and I cut you off completely I was gonna say you could embroider the face if you wanted you could totally embroider the face that wouldn't be a bad idea okay so we're gonna do the hardest part first and I'm telling you you'll get these done in 15 minutes they're not hard at all but it is nice to kind of see what I'm talking about so I got um, a length of florist wire because you're kind of a florist, too. I kind of do flowers. And you're going to just fold that in half and then crease it here. So I've got that little point, but I definitely want to make it more of a point. So I'm just going to press that real quick. And then, if you can see, I'm actually just going to run my finger down each side, and it kind of makes a rabbit ear shape. Can you see that? In this case, it looks like a fish. <laughs> and now it's ready to slide into my ear. Fish they put on it is, cars. it does look like that. So you're going to just slip that baby in. And then I take my binder clips and just clip that wire to the edge. Now there's a couple things that you can do. You can stuff this ear just a little bit if you want to. And I did that on the first one. And then you'll just maneuver that wire around the stuffing. Or you can leave it just plain, which is what this one is. I didn't have any stuffing in here. And I'm really... For the hassle, well, it's cute both ways. I it's cute, cute both like ways. That. It looks like a real ear. So it does look like a real ear. So then if you can see, I used black thread, but I have just done a little top stitch right up against the edge of the ear. And I don't know if you can see on the tip right here, but um, I didn't necessarily worry about getting that completely tucked at the top. Like I didn't make a perfect um, point at the top. It's, there's a lot of fabric going on right here, so if you have an issue with your machine, I actually just put my presser foot here and backed it up um, and used it that way. I Pinking shears, you mentioned pinking shears, Cindy. I did do pinking shears. I didn't on the first go around, and then I thought of it later, and I went, oh, why don't I use pinking shears? This is a great thing to use pinking shears on because it does like to fray a little bit. So if you have some pinking shears, that's what I've done here, and it's definitely here's what here's the, what I did and it was not pinking sheared so there's a real life demo of that um, if any of you have a cording uh, well I should say a piping foot can you see that right there I had one of these and I actually just put the wire right in here and then stitched along the wire so that you could um, get up nice and close to the edge of that rabbit here um, a zipper foot would work really well too, Linda. I like that. Um, the gauge wire is 20 gauge. 
So, and that's listed in the in the instructions too. It doesn't really matter, but I just, I had 26, I had 24, I had 18. And I just found that that was, it was still a good structure without being too big. But if it were too small, I mean, you could go up or down a little bit. I certainly wouldn't like run out to the store if you had 24 gauge, you could just use it. Um, but that's, if you're gonna go out and buy it, I think that's the best gauge that we used. And then you can see here, this one I didn't. And in a lighter colored bunny, it would show up more, which it does um, in the flax colored one. But I just took some makeup, a little bit of blush, and I have like a, oh, like a, um, a blush stick. So it's like lipstick. And I just put that in there and then I just rubbed it in. So if you want a little extra color, Ooh, that's then pretty. I did that. You're kind so, of fun, huh? You're right? So smart. Hey, Lisa. so ladies. Oh, I'm so sorry about the. The frozen, um, you're done. It's that's it. It's really, it's really not bad. I say you could get those done, both of them, in 15 minutes. So we're done with the ears. That was the hardest part. Everything else is super, super easy. So then you're going to do the arms, and you've got these little guys here. Same thing with the arms. You want to do little notches just around the edge right here to kind of clear out some of that fabric, but then the rest of it's just fine. Now, when you when you stitch to the very edge, let me grab my, you're going to leave a little bit of space here so that you can stuff it. I want to make sure it's big enough to fit my thumb in. It makes it the easiest and it doesn't need to be any smaller or bigger. Um, yeah, Linda, I think you could use, Linda asked if you could use a wire hanger. Um, you they're could, but thicker, it, it probably, they're a little bit thicker. If you, I don't know, they're getting thinner and thinner. The dry cleaner wire hangers are pretty thin. And so you might be able to get away with that. Just play around with it before you put it in the ear and make sure you can kind of, what you don't want to have happen is a kink in here and not be able to, to take it out, take the kink out. Did you have a thought? No. Jenny was saying something and I was walking all right, talking right over the top of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so then you're going to do the arms, and then you're going to do the body, okay? And with the body, you are going to do the same thing. It's all pretty, pretty, um, I'm sorry, I have it on the, let's do that. I have it on the sewing machine because I was going to show you the head. So this stuff right here comes together pretty easy too. You're going to leave a little bit of space at the top, of course, and that's all in the pattern. So, um, yeah, Joanne, any inexpensive any inexpensive um, wire works. And if you go to Hobby Lobby, you can get it already in the long sticks for floral. And you can use a 40% off coupon. We don't sell wire here at Girlfriends. Although, who knows, maybe this will be so big. I thought Hobby Lobby was getting rid of their coupons. I don't know. On sale every other Hobby day. Lobby? Well, Hobby Lobby does, I mean, I've learned when I buy flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I buy flowers on certain days of the week because I know that's when they're in on sale. Okay, so what I am going to show you is actually the head. Um, there's just a little bit more going on when we put the head together. And what that entails is I have... When you um, get the pattern out, you'll notice the template has different markings. Go ahead and transfer those markings to the back of your velveteen. Just makes it easier. And you're going to put the ears, you're gonna sew the ears in. Now it's time to clip our wires. I've clipped them too short and I've made them a little longer and I like it better when I leave them just a tiny bit longer. So I'm going to clip it about a half an inch from where I stopped sewing. And the I reason don't is when you're doing that. I know, I'm not even I'm here. Just hanging out. Hey! Hey Bob! I'm so <laughs> hey rabbit ears, that's perfect. Yeah, I'll give you two big ones. There, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've left them a little bit long. The reason is if you clip them too short and they don't get sewn into the seam, then your bunny ears are gonna flop. But if you can sew a little bit of that wire into your seam really carefully. Very slowly. Very slowly. I did do this a little bit slower. That's why the, the ears are the hardest because I do take it slow to make sure I don't get my needle in there. Um, but you do wanna sew that into the seam so that your ear sticks up and you have, you know. So it's not, unless you want it to be floppy, but what's the point of a floppy ear if um, you put wire in it? And you know what, ladies, gents, peoples out there, you do not 
have to put wire in these. You can leave them just the way they are and then they're cute little floppy ears. So you may do whatever. But now when we are going to be sewing, I don't know if you can see this, but I have a mark here and a mark here. Those are where the rabbit ears go in. And you are going to take and put your fabric face up. Then you're gonna lay right where those are. And in this, ooh, ooh, back up, back up. Before we sew those in, eyes. I have used buttons for eyes. I have used those cute little safety eyes that you can use um, on different little dolls. They have a little, a little ring around the back that you can squish in there and make them stay tight. And if you want to, now my first rabbit, I just did makeup. I did a little eyeliner and made the nose from makeup. Um, if you wanted to just quickly hand stitch it, or all of you embroidery people out there, you can create your own face and embroider this before you go cutting it out. But now's the time to do all of that um, if you're gonna do any of that embroidery. Now for the eyes, I recommend you do a little piece of scrap stabilizer right in the area where you're gonna put the eyes. Um, the eyes can go wherever you want. But do put a little bit of stabilizer on there. It helps keep everything stronger. Now, we're gonna sew this together before we put the eyes on, um, unless you're doing, if you're doing the safety eyes. If you're doing buttons, you can put it on right now, whatever's easiest. But now when you go to put the ears on, you wanna make sure that whatever side of the face you've put on, you've got the ears turned the right way. These ears look exactly the same on the back as they do on the front. So this one I definitely have a front because I've already colored it, but this one I don't. So if you don't want to worry about that, I recommend doing the coloring at the very, very end. So yeah, Lynn, SF101 is great. Um, you could use that too. We use that on everything. We use it on everything. We use it on everything. So if you've got a little bit of that Pell on, go for it. Um, that's a good one as well. Now, um, when you go to sew on those ears, like I said, you don't, if you've colored it first, you have to worry about this, but if you haven't colored your ear, it doesn't matter which direction you put them on, but you're gonna put it between those two marks. And there's also marks down here at the bottom where you're gonna leave an opening. So you wanna take these rabbit ears and angle them so that they go right into this opening down here. You're just gonna cross them over like this. Can you see that? You're gonna cross them like that. Everything's face up. Then face down, you're gonna lay the headpiece, okay? So this is what you've got. Can you see that? You want to sew the ears in first thing. Just take, well. A little basting stitch? Yeah, you can do a little basting stitch here and then here, and then you can go ahead and do the rest. But make sure that everything is stitched up here really well, okay? And then, like I said, this is where you would sew in your little bit of wire. Now, because of the type of fabric velveteen is, I recommend using bigger than a quarter of an inch. Well, that's usually the way it is with stuffed animals. They get stuffed, so you have to have a little bit more room. So I did just kind of, kind of in between a, a um, half an inch and a quarter of an inch, so like three-eighths kind of in there. I honestly was not picky about it. Rather than worrying too much about your edge when you're doing this, this is another little tippy trick, I just make sure that whatever I'm doing is nice and smooth. So it's not as big of a deal when you're doing this kind a of project. Trick? The what? A tippy trick, is that a new word? Did I say tippy trick? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Um, Wonder Clips hold these really nicely, and I really prefer using the Wonder Clips. I liked using the Wonder Clips as well when we were um, putting the wire on, because you can keep that right in there and then just quick, you know, quickly sew nice and even through there. But I, I really like the Wonder Clips. Um, Wonder Clip it, pin it. It does shift on you. It really does. But it be, but instead of paying too much attention, you know, as quilting, we always pay attention to how far in we are from the seam. Here, your biggest thing is you just want to make sure that whatever you, whatever stitch line you've created, um, makes it's nice and smooth. So when I got to doing the very ends of the rabbit feet, I didn't want them to be kind of funny. I mean, they turn out kind of funny anyway. But I can tell you these were perfect little circles. But I had an extra bit of seam allowance on the toes and I just trimmed trimmed that off. So um, go that route when you're working with a stuffed animal like this. Um, okay, Kids so. Kids aren't fussy. 
they're not fussy. They're not fussy. And these literally, I think that you, once you've got one, once you got it all down, I hope the pattern is, is easy enough to follow through, but you know, y'all know my number. So if you have questions, you can call me and I'll help you out. <laughs> but that's, um, another tippy trick. that's another tippy trick. If you have questions, but yes, you can use those wonder clips. Just do this head slowly. It's really not going to be tricky. And then you're going to flip that and flip that. And now you have a cute little bunny head. So um, you also want to make sure when you're angling when you're angling, is that a really a bit? Is that a real word? It's when you, right up there with tippy jerk. Yeah, when you angle these in here, make sure they're not too angled, to the sense that if I really did a big huge cross, I'd have my rabbit ears coming. You know what? I lied. It doesn't make any difference. It's all going to be cute no matter what you do. How's that? Perfect. It's perfect. Okay. So last thing is last. Once we get all that done. Last thing is last. Last thing is last. I know. Right? Okay. Now, I did this a few different ways. And this is my favorite way. The first way, don't tell anybody, I hot glued it. Don't hot glue it. <laughs> wash it. You can't wash it. Yeah, I wouldn't normally hot glue it, but I was in a lot of hurry, and I needed to get it to her for Studio 5, and it was going to be far away, and it wouldn't make any difference. But it did make for a really floppy head. He was floppy. He was really floppy, and he was understuffed. Got scooped up and bonked so on the head. So he did get scooped up and bonked on the head. So when you, um, let's start with this guy first. When you've when you've got everything done, and now you've stuffed, you can you stuff your, your um, arms, but you can leave that whole inch to inch and a half unstuffed. Um, it makes it easier to sew everything on. So you're going to just... It's a heck of a needle. This is... Look at that. I got it from the kit room. You're just going to go in and out. I did not make this pretty. You know why it doesn't matter? You're going to cover it right up. So just stitch it till it holds on. Grab it a little bit. Make sure that whatever kid is going to be holding on to that, that little rabbit arm can't get it off. So you're going to do that. Now... The next thing, and I'm going to just show you this tippy trick This tippy trick without thread, I'm going to show you just a little bit. So then when you're done putting the arms on, you're going to put the head on. And where this, this uh, opening was, you want to make sure it's folded under so you press it so that you can make sure that there are no raw edges showing right here. But I mean, like I said, this is like really, this is you could dress a turkey with that needle. <laughs> Joanne, you're funny. <laughs> anyway, he's he's. this isn't perfect, and that's kind of what makes it fun. You don't have to worry about all of it, and that also makes it fast. And if you're fussy, find another way, right? Well, and if you're fussy and you're enjoying the process, go for it. But I just took the front of the... There we go. I took the front of the face and the front of the body... Um, and just did a good couple stitches right here. Then I turned it around and I did a, I'm trying to do this backwards. This you like, did a couple of stitches right here. This looks like when my kids bring me their stuffed animals and they want me to fix the whole that's thing. What, that's what it looks like. It's like Frankenstein. <laughs> it is. Maybe if you had a smaller needle. Yeah, Larry says you can you can do nylon thread for, for toys. I've never used nylon thread. I haven't either. That's a great idea, actually. Then they don't pull it off so much. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. And it doesn't show up. Yeah, so when you put the head on, the neck is still kind of going up. You're not going to really, you're not going to fold the neck down. You're going to just fold the head under. And then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Tack down the sides, back and forth, back and forth, till it's like not. Now, if, you, if you're if you not careful, your head ends up being really floppy. If you want to fix that, then all you're going to do is come out a little bit further is uh, stuffed animals 101 yeah to Care Lisa. this is but it, it I'm giving you like detailed things but it's really not too terrible you're gonna just come a little bit higher and a little bit further in and you're with the velveteen especially you're gonna use a, a thread that matches and you don't see the stitches tons with that velveteen kind of being fuzzy and also yes you're gonna cover it up right um I am gonna cover it up so you can you can kind of take a bigger bite in your stitches within reason 
and that kind of helps keep the neck a little more stable. So this was really floppy and I just took a little bit more in and he kind of straightened right out. Because in the end, folks, last Jenny, Jenny Jenny's having way too much fun. Look at her. Don't <laughs> She's just chilling out. Wait, this over is, here having a nap. Yeah, I'm over there just I'm always bugging you when you're doing yours. So you've got yeah. this whole little baby done. You can go ahead and put your little color in your ears. You can put on the rest of the face if you rouge didn't do cheeks, it earlier. But not the knees. You could rouge the knees. You could rouge the knees. And this is where it kind of gets fun because you can do all kinds of stuff. But the last tip is to take a little. Here we go. It's very. It's like the fork method. Uh huh. While you're driving. <laughs> I was talking to my daughter yesterday. She's like, Mom, I'm hanging up. I can tell your phone's in your mouth. <laughs> She it did was. say that. It, that's right. Jenny was here with me. Anyway, they, you put this cute little, you can tie it on a bow, do whatever, but if you don't ever want anyone to see your stitches, you can just open that up and actually stitch this guy on. But if you're giving this to a kid, they don't care. It's going to look really cute when you're all said and done. So you want to end it with this, not just for cute, but to cover up all of your stitches. And there you have it. Ta-da! Any questions? <laughs>